ladies and gentlemen. Hello, and welcome back to the third episode of the DC3 build. Hope you are excited, because I certainly am, to start working on our beautiful airplane. In the last episode, we have finished the wings and started work on the fuselage. If you have not seen the last episodes, make sure to check them out now. I want to start this episode off by installing the two beasts that will power the DC-3. Brushless motors require an electronic speed controller. An ESC converts the direct current supplied by the battery into three-stage alternating current. The ESC is also hooked up to the receiver so that we can remotely control the speed of the engines. Now let's see if the circuit works correctly. Everything seems to be working fine, let's start installing. The receiver, battery and other electronics will be placed inside the fuselage. I therefore had to cut a hatch to be able to access them. From one of my crashed airplanes, I have salvaged this motor mount. Before gluing it into place, I have added additional supports. The engines are strong and I don't want them to fly off the airplane. Finally, time to install them. I have screwed them into place and fed the power cables through the wing. Next, it was time to build the engine housing, and I knew this wasn't going to be an easy task. I have decided to make it in a similar way to the nose of the airplane that I've made in the last episode. Fortunately, I came up with a quick way of cutting out these cross sections. Once they were cut out, I removed the plastic film. And here we go. I took a deep breath and started assembling. I wasn't even sure if it's gonna work, as I have never made an engine housing this way before. Once the pieces were in place, I took a blade and started carving. Even though it was taking a lot of time, the outcome was looking promising. I went ahead and completed the top section the same way. However, before completing the bottom part, we needed to take care of the landing gear, as the mounts for it would no longer be accessible. The landing gear was assembled and glued into place. For this model, I have decided to not make retractable landing gear. Retracts add a lot of weight, and this airplane is already gonna be heavy because of my plan to laminate the fuselage. And back to making the engine housing. I know this doesn't look like much, but it actually took a whole day just to make this one housing. I would therefore really appreciate any support on this video. And with the magic of video editing, the second engine is now complete as well. The only thing left to do was to give them a nice sanding job. My next task was to create the tail of the airplane. I started off by cutting the shapes out of foam board. Once I had the shapes, I started working on the vertical stabilizer. I have removed the rudder and figured out how to make the hinge for it. I have decided to make it out of two carbon fiber rods of different sizes. A thinner rod will freely rotate inside a thicker hollow one. Now it was time to attach the rudder to its hinge. The carbon fiber rod did not only allow us to control the rudder, but it also acted as a stiffener for the whole tailplane. Now it was time to add the second layer and cover up the hinges. Once this was done, the edges were carved with a knife to give the tail an airfoil cross section. 
Then I started working on the horizontal stabilizer. The elevators were removed and the hinge was created in a similar way. The benefit of doing the hinges this way is that you can hide the servos inside the fuselage. The hinge was assembled and then glued into place. Now it was time to install the elevators. In an effort to save weight, I have decided to make the carbon fiber hinge rather short and make the outer sections out of tape. The upper skin was prepared and glued into place. Then I have rounded off the edges to give the tail a nice aerodynamic airfoil. Finally, a bit of sanding and the tail surfaces were ready. Now I needed to create an arm by which the servos could rotate the carbon fiber hinges. I have decided to make them out of wood and use excessive amounts of superglue, as the failure of such a part would likely be fatal to the airplane. Finally, it was time to install the tail. I have started off by cutting a hole into which the tail could slide. Then I have applied plenty of hot glue and slid the tail into place. A few more extra pieces were added for support. Now I have prepared the attachment points for the vertical stabilizer. This included cutting a hole for the carbon fiber rods. And when everything was ready, I took some hot glue and glued the tail into place. In the next episode, I will work on the mechanisms that will bring these control surfaces to life. Hope you have enjoyed this episode of the DC3 build. In the last episode, I have asked you to leave suggestions on what livery we should paint this aircraft. I already got a few good ones, but if you still have some, make sure to leave them in the comment section so we can make a poll in the next episode. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.